Day 18. Day 18, we are back in the field. Checking moisture, making sure we're uh, dry enough to do what we need to do here. thing to do forever and ever has been is sit and wait for the wheat to dry. Well, since we're sitting here waiting for the wheat to dry, maybe I can give you a little bit of a lesson on the differences between winter wheat and spring wheat. This is a head of winter wheat and this is a head of spring wheat. It's a little bit different. You can tell that the spring is maybe narrower, not quite as fat as the winter wheat. Winter, spring, winter, spring. So the differences for winter and spring is that winter is seeded in the fall. Winter wheat is generally seeded around in sometime in September up here. And it, the winter wheat needs to have a cold spell. It needs to go through the winter to actually germinate. <clears throat> you can't plant winter wheat in the springtime and expect it to produce. However, you can plant the spring wheat in the spring. It does not require the cold snap to germinate. Spring wheat typically yields less than the winter. Spring wheat typically has higher protein than the winter. And in the southern states where we used to cut winter wheat from Texas all the way up, we never got the protein percentage when we would have the data from the elevator until we got up in the northern states. And then they really keep track of what the protein is up here. High protein would be 13 up. Protein is something that wheat produces when it's stressed. So with this wheat crop that we're looking at right here, again, I guess I didn't look at the truck paper to find out what the protein was on this. 
but because it's yielding so well, um, probably not as high as some of the stuff that I know around Jordan has in the past produced really high protein wheat. Price differences in winter wheat right now and spring wheat is about a dollar difference. I was just listening to the radio on the way over here to the field and uh, he's my friend, but he doesn't know it. These radio announcers that we've listened to from south to north are familiar voices and it's fun to get back up here to Montana and hear Russell Nemitz because we've listened to him for quite a long time and Taylor Brown. Anyway, I was listening to the commodity report on the way over here and it said that the winter wheat, I believe today was mm, five, five something, 551 and spring wheat was 671. I also heard that those prices are the lowest that they've been in three years. So that doesn't help the situation for the farmer at this point. Another question somebody had regarding the difference between spring wheat and winter wheat was, do you use the same seed, but just plant it in the different time? No. Winter wheat, like I said, is a variety that is specifically required to have the cold winter to germinate. Spring wheat is a variety that does not require that. So we've got two different seeds, two different uh, outcomes. So hopefully that will help a little bit with some of the questions between the spring wheat and the winter wheat. Serious. I mean, seriously, I mean, like three foot back on the rotor, you can't look in one side to see the other one. <laughs> Funny little story to get outfit at home. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, she's tattletailing on us. Anyway, they were cutting soybeans. Looks like a little bit of soft fly damage right here. Let's see if I can show you what a soft fly does. I just picked this up off the ground. It's been chewed off right there by the soft fly. Now I'm going to show you what the inside of the stem looks like. Okay, look, there's actually a bug inside there. You can see it. Well, you could. He must have fallen out. But see the inside of the stem? It's just a powdery mess. See that powdery mess? And like I said, there was an insect in there when I opened it up. It's been chewed off right there and then dropped on the ground. Okay, let's try this one and see if there's something inside there. No insect there, but you can see the damage that it's done. That head of wheat cannot get picked up off the ground, so it just stays. And if you have a good stand of wheat, it helps because it holds those chewed off stems up. If you have a thin stand of wheat, you're going to see major wheat damage laying on the ground. the inside of the stem of a healthy plant looks like. There's none of that powdery chewed up mess and it doesn't cause the stem to fall on the ground. I found an interesting site, an interesting YouTube video that talks a little bit more about sawfly, probably in more detail than what I even know. So I'm going to attempt to link that video to this one so that you can get a better idea of what the heck I'm trying to tell you about the saw fly. All I know is that it causes major damage and it's just just as bad as a hailstorm in times. So we're going to kind of load to see what Dennis decides that we're going to end up doing. But regardless, we're back to work here soon.
Rolling once again. Looks like we're on the move. You can kind of see the outline of the mountains beyond the smoke, kind of. enjoyed today's daily update if you did why don't you give it a thumbs up for us we'd like to know that and 
be sure to hit the subscription button and the bell notification so that you know when the next video is up and ready to watch. Thank you and we're so glad you're along with us for the journey.